Hey Tankers, Togrim here. This is episode 22 of my Road to Unicum series. Today we look at the E5. This is the tier 10 American Heavy that marks the end of the Heavy line. The upper front glacis is well protected as is the beak on the front hull. The lower front glacis is relatively soft and so you'll want to keep this covered as much as possible. The turret itself, the mantlet and the cheeks are pretty strong so you're not likely to get penetrated there. However, the cupola or commander's hatch is a very well known weak spot and some areas of the cupola have armor values well below 200 millimeters of armor so you have to be very conscious of tanks firing on you here it's the biggest weak spot and in terms of side scraping this tank isn't particularly good at it because the near side lower front glacis has armor values south of 200 millimeters so you can side scrape but if opponents are smart if your lower front glacis isn't covered they'll hit you there now for hill fighting opponents will get the first shot opportunity on you on your cupola before you can even target them with your gun and after you've fired and you're retreating beneath the crest tanks will sometimes chase you to get another shot into your cupola so it definitely limits your ability to hill fight if you're especially if you're in very close range fighting next to opponents such as like the one line on Serene Coast or um, the middle of the map in Prokhorovka as we start this Lakeville match I create some room to let this M41 Bulldog go by and I'm looking to get some early damage on tanks that first shot misses the E5, I probably should have been leading him more or picked a different target since he was so close to a building. And then for my second shot, I prioritize a bat chat. Obviously you want to get early damage into autoloaders to help prevent them from being able to carry later in the battle. Autoloaders are just, they're amazing at carrying, especially when they've got a lot of hit points to work with. So, you know, you want to prioritize a bat chat or a 50B or T57 just for example, or especially a Waffle E100 over any other tank. So our M41 Bulldog got wrecked. He wasn't behind any kind of meaningful hardcover, and so we don't have the benefit of having light tank on our side. And then their T71 has pushed up in the city and is tracked, so we finish him off. So both sides are going to be operating without the benefit of light tanks the rest of the way. The E5 is a pretty well-rounded tank. You'll see people refer to it as a jack of all trades and master of none. I do think that's selling it a little bit short. The gun handling is pretty exceptional for heavy tank. It has, you know, a medium-like aim time of two seconds and the accuracy is very good. The rate of fire is also pretty high at six rounds per minute, so a 10 second reload. The nice thing about where I, being where I am is that you know, I can get full side shots on tanks that are in city. The unfortunate thing is I've hung out here long enough that this friendly JPE-100 has come and he's now blocking the exit to the south, you know, in case I want to flex towards city along the K line. And you know, it is my own fault since I've been hanging out here looking for shots and I've put two shots into one of their bat chats, which is great. And so I'm just going to need to be patient until this JPE-100 moves and I don't want to ask him to move in chat, you know, he's got a really slow rate of fire and a super high alpha gun. So, you know, if he sees a good shot, he's got to take it and I don't want to, you know, get in his way of doing that. All right, land another snapshot there on an E-100. From this location, firing on tanks that are in city, a lot of times you're going to be shooting on their side hulls at a penetration angle of zero, so it's an easy penetration. I take a heat round to my mantlet, and since I knew I was spotted, I should have been rocking back and forth just a little bit in case you know there are tanks that are trying to fire and hit my cupola. You know, obviously, since this rock is in front of me, this provides very good hard cover in terms of my lower front glacis, but that cupola really is the main weak spot to be aware of. They have some tanks that are pushing through Valley, you know, in particular T-57, which is a very dangerous tank, and I can't yet flex in that direction. You know, the one good thing about being on road is that you can either flex to the east to go support city, you can stay mid and fire on targets either in the city or along the road, or you can push into Valley to help support it. Okay, the JPE-100 is now repositioning, so I'm backing down the road, and then I get a final uh, third shot, flanking shot, on a tank in the city a heavy tank and that takes out a uh, relatively unimportant but still it's a kill you know tier 8 tiger 2 as i'm backing up here what i should be doing is using the mouse look functionality so that i can keep my turret uh, pointed to the north uh, in case a tank comes down the road and as you'll see in a minute this bat chat is pushing road this first shot goes off for my turret you know which i rotate toward him as quickly as i can and then i put a shell now the important thing is since i've got him lit we've got some friendly tanks including 
a batch hat who starts to fire on their batch hat on the road. So I push forward to keep him spotted, put another shell into him, and then in a moment here, our batch hat's gonna finish him off. So that's really big. You know, obviously I wanna take these risks, even though I'm being fired on by some tanks in city that I can't see, finishing off a batch hat this early in the game is a really big thing. All right, so, you know, I'm flexing to the west. This is one of the nice things about being on the road. And I figure that, you know, the tanks in city should be fine. There's like six of them there, so it's not like they're short-handed. And, you know, we've noticed on this side, they've got a T-32, T-57, and a Roomba. So I hit the T-32 in his cupola, which is really the only weak spot that I'm going to be able to target from this particular position. You know, the top of his hull is very... Uh, sorry, the top of his turret is very thin, the turret roof. So that's going to be a hard target to hit. And when I hit that... Roomba, I did set him on fire. That shot on the T-57's turret cheek, the lower side of the turret cheek, uh, bounced off. You'll get some troll bounces on T-57's. It's one of the benefits of playing that particular autoloader. And this T-32, since he's not looking at me, you know, I can take my time and aim in and punch him through the hole. Now, I do want to be careful about rounding the corner here around this dead Roomba because there's a gap and I don't want to get shot. So I'm waiting until T-57 is not looking my way, and then I pierce him through the lower cheek of his turret. But Yag Tiger, the friendly player, just made a, a big mistake. You know, he was trying to get into the mix, and you know, it was coming around the Roomba, and gave the T-57 a very easy shot. T-57 is almost dead. I want to continue to kind of push up and support, and from this angle here, I can punch him easily through his lower front glacis. And you know, so now we've we've saved Valley, but our six friendly tanks in City are all dead. You know, I was saying earlier that the E5, you know, beyond the gun handling, it has reasonably good mobility. It's not as agile, obviously, as a medium tank, but it has sufficient speed to flex and get around the map. And, you know, I find it to be overall a very comfortable tank to play. It doesn't really have any noticeable weaknesses, with the exception of that cupola, which, you know, again, in certain hill fighting situations, if, you know, point blank hill fighting, uh, hill combat can be a big limitation. But aside from that, you know, this is a very comfortable tank to play. I get another shot in this bad chat. This is the same one that I hit previously uh, twice in the city. And he picks a very poor approach line. He's going to come up high, which gives me an easy finishing shot. And then I've spotted two enemy TDs. So the E4 is the one that I need to really be concerned about. Obviously, you know, they're both at high hit points, so it's going to take some time to wear them down. And the E4 has 750 alpha compared to my 400. So, you know, I don't want to trade for him one for one. He does have a very long reload. So, you know, if I can, I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm just trying to stay very conscious of when he fires his gun. That German TD comes up pretty high. I hit him through his lower front glacis. Another friendly hits him. And so now he's in one shot territory. And then I'm backing up from the E4 as I don't want him to hit me. And then. I'm still waiting to see where... Okay, so the E4 just fired, so I'm going to push up really aggressively around this rock, put a shell through his relatively thin side hole armor, and then back up under hard cover. We know where their Conqueror, the two TDs, are, and I'm waiting for the I-7 to appear. You know, he's probably going to be pushing along the JRK line, and I spot him here. You know, I do have coded optics equipped as the third equipment piece to help, you know, push out that view range. It's really important just to know where he is. And still, of course, watching this E4 as much as possible. And there, you know, I make a bit of a mistake. I, I thought that my cupola might have been hidden. And I take a shot on the E4, and then I penetrate him, which is great. But he return fire and hits me. And then I make a really big mistake. Instead of taking a second shot on the E4 to trade him two for one and then drop him down into one shot territory, I try to get a kill shot on. The German TD. That was a big mistake. You know, whenever possible, you want to take the shot on the higher tier TDs that are going to drop them into one shot territory. So, you know, a big mistake on my part. Thankfully, it doesn't cost us the match. And I'm still waiting to see when this E4 is going to fire his gun. I know that the IS 7 is out in front of me since I had spotted him, but, you know, his gun handling is crap and there's a rock in front of me. So, you know, while he is at distance, it's going to be hard for him to hit me. I get kind of lucky there, you know, since I'm wiggling back and forth, I bait a shot into the side of my cupola, it misses. So I hit the E4, and then during his long reload, I come up and I finish him off. So that was really the most important thing, you know, is taking out that full HP E4. You know, their I7 is pretty beat up, their Jagdpanzer is one shot, and then that time, I put him down. Now we do have an E5 coming in through Valley, so he swung, you know, swung along 
all the way around, came down into Valley and killed you know, our tier 8 medium tank. And their I-7 is hull down, so I switch over to high explosive. And again, the I-7 has pretty poor gun handling, and so you know what I want to do is just you just quickly snapshot him and see if I can bait a poor shot in return from uh, him. And also that his tank has really poor gun depression, so there is a little bit of an incline here. And I'm trying to get a shot on his tank. I'm not sure where the Conqueror is, so I go ahead and push up pretty aggressively, and then that second HE shell finishes off the IS-7. And now we're in good shape. We have a three versus two. The unfortunate thing is the Jagdpanzer pushes up, and you can hear that tracking sound. So even though I can't see his tank, I can hear that the JPE-100 has been tracked, which means as soon as the E-5 is reloaded, he's going to finish him off. So I'm pushing up as aggressively as I can. I'm hoping to catch the E5. You can see he's driving away and exposing his rear. I don't quite get here fast enough. And then I have a shot, it looks like, on his cupola, but he manages to wiggle back out of the way. And so that's a really good tactic to protect that cupola, is to wiggle your hull back and forth, make it hard for people to try to land shots on it. And so now this is a tough spot. We're in a two versus two. The Roomba has spotted the Conqueror just now. And, you know, I'm really afraid that that Roomba, you know, he's not going to be able to uh, balance anything. His armor is fairly worthless. So I'm hoping to get a shot on the E5, and eventually I realize, you know what, I'm just going to come up and trade with him, hope that the E5 misses, because I have more hit points to work with than he does. Keeping my hull angled, you know, hopefully, you know, hoping that he's going to miss something, and then as he charges forward, I put the killing shot through his cupola. So now we have a two versus one, and this is heavily favoring us since we know that the Conqueror is at relatively low hit points. I actually asked the team as I'm driving up, you know, if anyone knows what his hit points are at. Uh, but basically it's going to take us one and a half shots to take him down. And as I'm driving up, I tell the, the Roomba, look, let me take the first shot. Let me eat his first shell. And then, you know, after that, you can, you know, you can take a free shot on him. So, you know, we exchange damaging shells. The Roomba comes up, he waits, he waits, he waits, <laughs> he waits, and then when he finally pulls forward, he waited too long. And it would have been better if he had just done nothing, as opposed to sit there and hesitate. This is my last AP shell. I try. I should have probably aimed it a little bit lower at the lower front glacis. And all I've got left are HE shells, but the Conqueror is at very low hit points, so I'm going to leverage the good gun handling on this E5 to just snapshot the top of his cupola, or top of his turret, and that's the game. It's amazing, you know, only like 20-some or 100-some hit points separated the two teams in terms of the outcome. So this is a pretty monster carry. I end up dealing almost 10,000 damage and you know, scored 9 kills, bounced over 4,200 damage, and throw in another 1,200 damage in spotting. So you know, this is like one of the biggest carries that I've had just from a sheer number standpoint. Next up are the French light tanks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.